2012 teammates in a glove and it's the upscale version i dressed up just for uh jared hoffbauer you look great okay. thank you mm -hmm. i appreciate it so you know how to play our game i think so okay yeah, I it's think so it's very detailed all right you reach into the glove and you pull out one of your former teammates and then you talk about your teammate you got that i can do I that know it's like 19 yeah. steps I got it. You're going to be all right? Yeah, still. Yeah, now, just as a precursor, you've been with a couple of organizations, Padres yeah. last year, Blue Jays, mm -hmm. Cardinals. So we got a we got an array here. we got an assortment. Should right. be good. All right. Do you generally like your teammates? Are yeah. Are you generally a nice oh, person? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think, uh, I think I like all of my teammates most of the time. I've never actually <laughs> seen you not get along with one of your teammates. It's hard. It's hard not to get along with me. Yeah. It really is. I would um, agree. Easy going. So. And I'm a great teammate, too. So. Laid back guy. That's right. When there's a chance for a double play, you don't hold the ball for yourself. Um, not all the time. The teammate. Mm -hmm. Most nice. of the time, yeah. It's good. Yeah. Uh, okay, first teammate. All right, let's do it. Pick one out. Let's dig in here. Some are bigger than others as we try and rig the game for the good ones. Anthony Rizzo. Anthony Rizzo. Yeah. Played with Anthony last year in AAA with Tucson. Uh, and I missed the first two months of the year last year so I didn't get there till you know till later on and and I saw him in spring training and and uh, I knew he was you know he was he was young but man he uh, probably one of the the guys who had the most easy BP pop that that I've been around it really was to all fields big strong guy and didn't really get to know him a lot in spring training but um like I said I got to Tucson you know a couple months late but man he was awesome Great kid, uh, great head on the shoulders, and uh, you knew he was going to be something special. And um, you know, awesome guy, great teammate. Uh, you know, he got called up last year, had a little little rough stint there in the big leagues, but uh, ended up going to the Cubs, I believe, right this yeah. year. And I think he's he's just tearing it up. He's swinging it well. You know, hitting some homers. That's a great park for him. So uh, awesome guy, though. I still keep in touch with him today. He's great. So you could really tell. Well, watching him in BP. Absolutely. Uh, you know, BP swing is great. And uh, like I said, hits the ball from the left field foul pole to the right field foul pole. And great defender, big guy, but he's, you know, he's pretty agile. And, and uh, I, I think he's, he's, gonna, he's got a very promising career ahead of him. We're off and running. Let's get number two here. All right. Keep moving. We got. No time wasted on teammates at a glove. Mark Mulder. Uh, Mark, he, um, he was one of the, the older guys, my very first call up with St. Louis. And, uh, you know, he, uh, he he was one of those guys I stayed away from, to be honest with you. A little you know, cranky. He, he was just a veteran, you know, and 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 uh, coming up with St. Louis, you know, he was, he was a veteran and he was a pitcher veteran at that. So I kind of, you know, kept my, kept my distance from him. But, uh, no, he was good. He was uh, fun to play behind, you know, for the little amount of time I did play behind him. He, um, you know, I had a couple spring trains with him there, but uh, did good. he just not let people into his world? What's going on there? Did they have their own portion of the clubhouse for the veterans? Well, hey, uh, guys like me, you know, you kind of kept your distance from from guys like Mark. You know, when you first got called up, you just you, you wanted to stay unnoticed, and uh, and I did. But no, he was great. He was uh, he was fun. Let's keep moving. <laughs> Let's go ahead. <laughs> All right, here we get here. Teeing threw a couple names back, so. I couldn't see you doing that. I like this one. This is good. Yeah. Terry Kennedy, TK, uh, manager last year, and and uh, in Tucson, yeah. Triple A manager. Uh, you know, had a great, obviously a great professional career. But but from from what I got to see from TK, he was great. Fun to play for. Uh, you know, really a, a players type manager. He uh, he, he told you what you know, whatever you needed to know. No lying. If you you know if if Good or bad, he was going to let you know about it. But uh, liked guys that played hard. Um, Hard-nosed manager took up for his guys, and uh, it was fun, you know, f fun to fun to play for him. Now, I know this year has been tough on him, too, and last year you guys didn't have a great record. Right. What was he like as a manager for somebody who, you know, wasn't with a team that was high in the standings? Yeah, he, uh, you know, we, we had some, some pretty bad stints there for, for you know, for, for a couple of couple different times there and, and he would he would come in there and he'd let you know about it you know he was a winner and but that's respectable you know uh you want to play for guys like that anytime you know you're 
you're not playing well, you don't want to get complacent with it, and, and he definitely didn't let you do it. So it was good. At least you talked to him. You know, you didn't stay away from no, him no, like Mulder. No, I, I, I talked to TK. I talked to TK. It was good. What's, who's next? <laughs> got here. Good one. Good one. Uh, David Freeze. Uh, one of my all-time favorites. Uh, really? Yeah, he was awesome. Awesome teammate, awesome guy. And he was another one of those guys. When, when we got him from the Cardinals, he was, uh, man, you could tell he was going to be something special, you know, in the minor leagues. And and uh, he got in a good spot with St. Louis there and, and you know, he got got his name on the map. And those guys knew he was next in line and, and he was well-deserved of it. Uh, I lived with him for two years. Two years. Uh, so as a roommate. As a roommate. How's yeah. David Freeze? Awesome. He uh, he likes to sleep though, which is fine because I do too. So we got along great. You know, we slept till noon every day and then went to straight to the park. So it was good. It was good. But it was funny though. We uh, in Memphis. This is a little story. We they had our apartments were kind of the right field fence, or the right field. We're behind the right field fence, and that's where all the guys lived and. Freeze was late getting there one year, and, and we already had uh, we had three guys in in our three bedroom apartment. Well, Freeze didn't have a place, so you know we invited him in, and there was a little like a uh, little cubby hole. It was like a computer area, I guess, but no walls. It was just like a little walk in, and it had a like a beam on the on the third wall there. So what he did, he got a little single air mattress. I'm telling you, this thing. A, a twin air mattress barely fit in it, all right? And this was David's room, and he got he got uh, sheets and put up on the two walls to make his four walls. And he stayed in that thing all year. So, and he was a big fan of Batman. So we called it the Batcave. So he uh, he lived in the Batcave for a year, and and uh, we got him, you know, Batman mask and all that stuff. And But he was awesome. He wore it out to BP and stuff. It was great. Where did he put all his stuff? In everybody else's rooms? Yeah, pretty much. Everywhere. Everywhere. But, uh, no, he was great. David uh, came to my wedding and everything. And, and I, like I said, I still keep in touch with him today. And he had a great World Series and all that stuff. And couldn't be, couldn't be more proud of him. It's awesome. The Batcave. The Batcave, yeah. Who else you got? You got here. Jose Batista, all right, another good one. Um, great teammate, hard worker. You know, uh, I got to see Jose last year with his, or two years ago actually, when he when he had his first really big year, and and uh, you know, for as much success as he had that year, and and all the media attention and all that, home run leader, he handled it great. You know, very down to earth, um, helped the young guys. He, uh, Fun to be around. Great teammate um, and a hard worker. I mean, it's that's that's it's one of the reasons why he, he's he is where he is. You know, he he, he he he's really worked for it. And what type of stuff did he do? Always in the cage. Uh, he was you know he was he lived in the cage. He, he kind of perfected a swing. I mean, you know, he's he got leg kicks kind of hard to handle sometimes, and and he does it with perfection, day in and day out. And you know, very fun to watch take BP and. Not only an offensive guy, I mean, he can play anywhere on the field. You know, you can put him at shortstop and he can play. And it's, uh, I think that, I think he's, you know, he's, he still doesn't get the credit he deserves. Really? Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's that good. He really is. How about that? One more. Let's do one more. All right. Move on from that one. All right. Albert Pujols. There you go. Uh, I mean, another guy is, I mean, I, I think he's the best in the game. You know, uh, great teammate, obviously. He uh, he was, when I first got called up, you know, like I said earlier, you kind of want to, you know, stay out of the way and, and stay unnoticed. They're doing their thing. You don't want to. Right. You know, especially guys like him, you know. You don't want you don't want to get that on your bad side. But, no, he uh, he's one of those guys, if you do things the right way and, you know, you're on time and you go about your business the right way, he – you know he likes you, and and I did that when I got there. And I, I, he he kind of took me under his wing when I got there. He was one of the guys that, that really made me feel comfortable, and and uh, you know I, I didn't really expect that from him. You know, being you know the status he's on or whatever. But uh, you know he really really took care of me. Really told me kind of what to expect and helped me out with you know with with getting into the big league routine, I guess. And 
the next year in Toronto, when I got called up, St. Louis was the first team we played, and uh, he was the first guy to come over and say hello to me. So that right there just tells you what kind of guy he is. You know, I'm, here I am, not very you know important or whatever, and and to go out of his way to you know to come speak and say hello and that kind of thing was it was it was cool. What sort of stuff did he teach you? Just you know, just uh, he was as far as knowing pitchers and knowing you know how to go about facing pitchers in certain situations it was he was unbelievable at it you know and and just video and what guys would throw in certain counts and and all these tendencies and and uh he was he was the best i've ever seen at it and uh but like i said i mean he's another one of those guys he's a hard worker he's the first guy even in spring training he was he beat everybody to the field every day in spring training and he was the last guy to leave and you don't see that too often you know from from big time veterans like that in spring training, you know, those guys are, their job's there, they don't have much to worry about. But he uh, continued to, to work hard every single day, even, you know, even in spring training, and, and uh, it's obviously paid off for him. Well, Jared Hoffpower, thanks for playing our game. Absolutely. It's teammates in a glove with Jared Hoffpower, the Chiefs infielder, right here on SyracuseChiefs.com and our YouTube channel, Teammates in a Glove 2012. <laughs>